Manpower! Who the hell plays this game mode? Ah yes, manpower. The game mode's so abandoned that not even the bots want to touch it. But how come it is so abandoned? Alright. Looks like we're going to be talking about this, aren't we? So what is manpower? Well, it is a game mode placed on the alternate section of the casual boot screen, meaning that it is doomed to have a lower player count than all the other game modes. I mean, I can barely find one full server. Anyway, what is manpower in reality? Well, it's a game mode based on a modified version of Capture the Flag that features power-ups, but most importantly, no random crits. But what are these power-ups that I have mentioned? Well... Let us meet them all, starting with... Agility. The name speaks for itself. It gives you the power of agility. Basically, you will move faster, you will have an instant weapon switch, and I recommend you use this with Scout, because he's already a powerful class due to his speed and mobility. And I recommend you use it with Heavy to negate his slow speed and his slow grappling hook speed. And also Spy. You want to get those backstabs too, don't you? Haste. Even though haste and agility are pretty similar, they are pretty different. With haste, you will have more bullets in a clip, more reserved ammo, and a stupid fast firing speed. Pair this with a scout in the force of nature, or if you're feeling really fancy, the soda popper, you will have, you know, a stupid fast firing speed, and you will become quite possibly unstoppable. I also recommend pairing this up with a soldier to spam rockets on choke points. Yep, this is fun, right? But wait. How about this, you could spam rockets with the speed of the direct hit. Pair it up with the direct hit and you got a laser rocket launcher. Yeah. With a demo man, you can spam stickies with haste. Your stickies will deploy faster and they will fire faster. So, you know, you can literally use this as your primary. And also as heavy, you will rev up faster. Which is pretty cool if I don't say so myself. The King. With this power-up, you will become the literal king, as you are able to heal people around a certain radius. And also, you will fire weapons faster, but not as fast as with haste, keep that in mind. And you will also build uber quicker. Pretty cool. Also, did I mention you will get a passive heal effect as well? You could pair this power-up with any class and it will be useful and stupid overpowered. But, I recommend you pair this up with a medic, as you can build uber pretty quickly and be the ultimate support weapon. Heal people around you when you're healing someone important. Pretty nice. Also, I like to mention that the King Power Ups logo is actually the Queen logo from Chess. Yeah. Knockout. With this power up, you will be restricted to your melee weapon and your grappling hook, with the upside of double the amount of health and that you can knock out others' power up and intel with a melee swing. Although this seems pretty amazing, it's not. I mean, when you take away your primary weapons in a game mode like manpower, you know stuff is going to be pretty chaotic, and if you're stripped to your melee and you don't have a good plan to take down the enemy, you're going to be destroyed. But anyway, you should only use this while playing as Demo Knight in my opinion, as of course you won't lose anything because as a Demo Knight, you're already using your melee. You can try heavy with the KGB, I mean... I've seen someone try that before and it works surprisingly well. Although with Heavy's grappling hug nerf, it's, uh, it's a little bit risky. Then you could try Spy. I mean, because as a spy, you should really be going for backstabs. That's your main purpose. Precision. The name says for itself. You will have less of a bullet spread, blessing or curse depending on who you ask, and no damage fall off. And what is damage fall off, you may ask? Well, imagine you're shooting a scout from this distance and from this distance. Now, of course, despite, you know, scouts being pretty hard to hit, imagine they're still. Yeah, th these rockets, they're going to do different amount of damage. But with precision, there's no damage fall off, so the rockets are going to do the exact same damage. Pretty cool, am I right? And also, your rockets and pipes will also travel faster, and your sniper rifle will do a bit more damage, and charge quicker. 
Obviously, you should try using this as the sniper for the damage, but you should also try this out with the beggar's bazooka due to the rocket deviation being non-existent. If you have ever seen that one man's guide video from Soundsmith, you know what I'm talking about. However, be sure you can aim, as the lack of bullet spread will be a curse to those who cannot aim, i.e. rely on random crits and luck. By the way, random crits don't exist in this game mode. Plague. I hate this power-up. If someone has this and touches you, you bleed to death in 10 seconds. I mean, look at this. <laughs> It's pretty overpowered. If you want to get rid of this effect, you must touch or go near a health pack. Personally, I would want this effect to be less brutal, but now is not the time to rant. Anyway, I recommend this that you know, use it as a spy because you're basically going to be near a class anytime because that's basically what your job as a spy is. And if you fail to stab someone, you will at least let them bleed to death. You can also be powerful with Pyro Plague because you're going to be doing most of your damage at close range as a pyro anyway. So, to put it in short, be at close range with Plague, even though it's an annoying power-up. Regeneration. You'll regenerate health and ammo. Pretty simple. I tried playing as Engineer with the Widowmaker with regeneration and I found out that it's pretty fun. If you've ever seen that one Uncle Dane video just titled The Infinity Symbol talking about the Widowmaker, you can see how pretty powerful this could be. But in all reality though, you should try this with any class as you will become literally unstoppable until you get gangbanged by 7 heavies or some will reflect. Speaking of which... Reflect. To put it in short, you will have 80% of damage dealt at you reflected as damage to the enemy firing at you. Seriously, you do not know how overpowered this is. I mean, just take a look. This is absolutely insane. But anyway, I do not recommend fighting these people unless you have regeneration or resistance as that's the only way you're going to be taking them out on your own. But Anyway, you should use this as any class if you want to attack or push at the enemy team. I mean, you could take so much damage and not even die. I mean, look at the last clip. It's overpowered. Strength. You double your power level on your weapons and have no damage fall off. This is a really good power up for pushes and I recommend use this as a soldier, a demo, or a heavy to make large pushes. I mean, look how much damage I am doing as a soldier. This is really powerful. Supernova. The power up that no one knows how to use. But to use this one, you must wait 30 seconds for a full charge, or deal damage to make this meter go quicker. Once the meter is filled up, you must go to your grappling hook and right click. What this will do is that it will stun enemies nearby for a short amount of time and remove their power up. This could be very useful for when the enemy team inevitably gains a large advantage over you and you don't have revenge crits just yet. Vampire. Every damage dealt will be returned to you as health, you will gain a bit of health, and be immune to reflect. Does it sound overpowered? Mm, I mean, it, it is just a little, but I recommend that you play this as a pyro because, uh. Yeah, and as a soldier because, I mean, just look at this. Look at this. You're, you're unstoppable. You're like a stone wall. You just cannot be stopped. Even Reflect cannot stop you. This... Oh, did I forget revenge crits? Because, uh, yeah, I almost did. But anyway, this is given out to the team that's getting dominated on by the other team, which will inevitably happen. These crits will last for somewhere near 30 seconds on touch, so make sure you use them wisely. And if the other team is still dominating you, then God bless you. 
Now you have met the power-ups, but what about the grappling hook, the other special thing of manpower unique to this game mode? Well, the grappling hook is a special item you equip in your special slot, basically where your manpower canteens and your magic spell books go. You can access this, you know, slot using the 6 key, which I highly recommend you change it to something else because, uh, yeah, trying to reach for the 6 key isn't exactly the most comfy thing to do. Once you equip it, you can practically go anywhere in a similar distance using your left click button. You will stay where you are until you let go of your left click. If you want to go fast while grappling, as I like to call a grappling junk, grapple to a place and then jump in the apex of the grapple. This will make you go pretty fast and makes rocket jumping and sticky jumping outdated. Unless you're a heavy, then you're fucked. How about the classes? Well, nothing has really changed, so you could play most of the classes as normal and manpower, but I will talk about the notable changes for this game mode made to some of the classes. As a Demo Knight, the shields have been seriously nerfed due to a certain solar light video, which means you have to wait for a longer time for these shields to recharge, aka too long to matter. I best recommend that you use haste or agility while playing Demo Knight to counter this nerf. Also, do not use the Zatoichi. You're going to be grappling a lot and the Zatoichi, uh, it hurts you. As a heavy, you grapple very slowly and you cannot jump during the grappling journey, which I do not understand this nerf, but you should know this if you're going to play as a heavy. Just make sure you grapple in the right places. As a spy, you should not really be using any power-ups besides Plague or Agility, as once you backstab someone, you will steal the other person's power-up. This could be good if some heavy meta combo is trying to spawn camp you. By the way, don't spawn camp. Nobody likes me. Medics aren't really seen in manpower as regeneration, king, Vampire, basically all the other healing power-ups, dispensers, and health packs really lessen the need for one. But if the team seriously needs a medic, please, go play medic. This could actually apply to any other game mode though, so if you learn something with this fact, the more you know. Oh yeah, what about the maps? Uh, Alright, anyway, to put it in short, Three of the official maps are just reused ones, Thunder Mountain, Five Gorge, and Foundry, which are just mere versions of themselves in this game mode. Then there is the only good map in this game mode, Hellfire. I will be talking about Hellfire the most because it is the map sorted for this game mode the most, but I will talk about the other three sometime in the future, maybe as another manpower guide, but anyway, let's just talk about it. With any manpower map, you want to get a power up as quickly as possible, so there are four areas outside of spawn to get a power up. Here, 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 and here. Now, if you don't have a power up, then you can always go to the middle. However, it's a very risky area, so uh, take a power up at your own risk. Now, most classes can go and do their deathmatch thing once they get a power up. I mean, nobody really follows the CTF rules anyway. Which, by the way, really? Seven captures? Please fix this valve. Anyway, if you're an engineer and you want to build a sentry anywhere to dominate the map, you can always build here and here. They're pretty stupid areas, I know, but if you want to dominate this map, it's your best bet. If you're a sniper and you want to be in a stupid place to get some heads, you can always go anywhere as this map is just wide open. You can always go here, 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 maybe here, maybe at top of here, oh how about here? Okay, how about all the map? Because this map is so open, you can just snipe anyone from anywhere. And that's why I like it. If a team is, you know, just dominating the entire game on top of this roof here, there's actually a way where you can kind of sabotage them, maybe do a little sneak attack. Use this path to go under. Now once you go under this path, you have two choices. You can always go up here, which 
is pretty nice, but it's a little risky as there could be a sentry here. If there's a sentry up there, you can always go take the left path. Which, if there's a sentry there and a sentry up on the up route, then uh, you're kind of screwed. You should probably you should probably play spy if you want to take out that team. But you know, anyway. Now here we are before the intel. There are four ways to go. You can either go on the bottom left or right, which, uh, I mean, it's a nice way, but people will know where you're going, so you sh it's probably your best bet to take the top route. Take the top route, and you have two places to go, the left or the right. You could take the left, which is an easier way to go, but snipers can hit you out of spawn and destroy you. The right... <laughs> The right route takes you through a vent area where you can steal a power-up. However, if you do not have a friend near you to open this vent, you'll be stuck here defending for yourself, so make sure you have a backup plan before going here. Now it's time for your charge to go to the intel. Now there are two ways to get the intel. You can either go through their spawn or go to the left path. The left path is the way basically everyone goes because, you know, you're not at spawn where you're going to get destroyed. Now, once you go get the intel, I see most people taking the way through the spawn, which is pretty weird if I say so myself, you have a big risk of being destroyed. And by the way, if you're carrying the intel, you're going to grapple slower, which kind of sucks. So make sure you're a scout with haste or agility, either one of those two while carrying the intel. Pretty nice, right? This is just a quick video I wanted to do explain my favorite game mode, and I hope I won't get crucified for saying that. But anyway, these are just the basics of manpower that I've just explained, because, you know, there are more advanced things, like which power-ups counter what, uh, you know, even more advanced things you could do with the grappling hook, just so much stuff. But anyway, I hope I will see you soon with another video in the future.